Hey Sully, it's your boy. Just wondering when you're gonna be here because I'm all alone right now. Just like my bar mitzvah. All right, call me back. Oh, he sent me a video. Now we could chart our vessel over this way, but then we might encounter the wind. Oh, ahoy Michelle. Uh, you caught me with my maps. Look. Well, Sully, leaving me hanging, they haven't brought me a replacement, and I'm doing this all by myself. As always, Sully was wrong. I am alone. Lonely, I am so lonely. I have... Not anymore. <gasps> From Studio C in the Robert Zemeckis Center, it's The Breakdown! Woo! On today's show, weather, traffic, and Captain Sully! Let's make some noise for your host, Sully Zack! Not here. And Michelle Askew! Woo! It's The Breakdown! Woo! Woo! It's still processing. Yeah. For you, it is my honor to join you on this television journey. Wow. <laughs> Wait a second, who are you? The name's Cliff Danger, but Danger's just my middle name. Most people call me incredible. Whoa, <laughs> thank you for being here, Mr. Danger. Please, please, Mr. Danger is my father. You can call me Cliffolis. That sounds a lot like. <laughs> I know what it sounds like, Michelle, but uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Oh. What's your deal? Well, three years and a possibility of parole in exchange for testifying. Fascinating. I was just in prison myself. <laughs> Mongolian war prison, actually. Oh. Lots of snow there. I've also played in my fair share of snow. <laughs> <laughs> I once skied off the top of Mount Everest, and I don't always fight tigers, but that day I did. When a rare Nepalese bit off one of my skis. Needless to say, I won. Wow. <laughs> Shall we? We shall. On to the news. Patriots owner Robert Kraft was charged with soliciting prostitution. Kraft denied the accusation, saying, Tom would never ask for money. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pope Francis called abusive priests tools of Satan. Responded Satan, LMAO, those dudes are tools, but they're not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Ohio police officers lured a pet pig back to its owners with Oreos which is how my parents lured me out of the house and then locked the door. <laughs> <laughs> a Tennessee couple was fined by their homeowners association after their car left a penis-shaped outline in the snow. But Jerry's allowed to keep his Christmas lights up until February. 41 states are poised to ban revenge porn, which is bad news for my upcoming Kill Bill erotic film. <laughs> The FDA warned that drinking young people's blood will not make you live forever. However, it will make you feared in prison. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan revealed that she once tried to parent trap her own parents. And Macaulay Culkin revealed he actually caught and tortured two burglars. <laughs> <laughs> the city of Ohio has voted to give Lake Erie the same rights as a person. Guess some people really want to have sex with the lake. <laughs> A Florida man was arrested for domestic battery after allegedly throwing a cookie at his girlfriend. Monster! <laughs> All right. Next on the show, we have a major star joining us. Oh, boy. Is it Arcturus? No, like, like a pioneer. Meriwether the Tank Lewis and William the Pitch Clark? <laughs> what? No, they're dead. Okay, please welcome on rock legend Paul McCartney of the Beatles. Hey now, um, I'm Paul. I'm more of a Gavin DeGraw fan, so it's <laughs> just okay that you're here, Mr. McCartney. Sir McCartney, I've been forced to take jousting lessons every day since my knighting in 97, and horses give me terrible rashes on my glutes if I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> Isn't being knighted more of an honorary achievement? Britain's on the brink of fighting for independence from America, and it's not like Hey Jude is going to win me any battles. <laughs> Maybe band on the run, but that's besides the point. Um, anyways, we want to get your opinion on the debate that has become a staple on the internet these days. Who's the best Beatle? Me or Ringo? 
Oh, I, I wasn't looking for an answer, more just what you think about the because debate. Because we didn't die? <laughs> I mean, you know, the Beatles wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been the Beatles without Lennon doing the mumbo jumbo and Harrison doing the hoo-ha and Ringo, you know, playing the clarinet or whatever. <laughs> uh, excuse me? But I'm the best um, because I'm the only one who released Band on the Run. Oh, right, <laughs> with wings. Band on the Run. Yeah. Band on the Run. It's such, such a good song. Uh, you know, the doctor told me once that the, that song had won, it cured cancer. Okay, so uh, moving back. No, he got his PhD um, in philosophy of cancer from a school that only recently lost its accreditation. <laughs> right, right, okay. So back to the Beatles. Critics like to talk about how your eighth album, Sgt. Pepper, ushered a new era of musical experimentation. What do you think? Is that true? Um, it wasn't our intention. Uh, we were just so bored and we created these funny little characters who wore these funny little suits and made these funny little songs. Um, it was a lot of fun uh, until Chris Martin and the rest of his awful band assaulted me and stole the suits to wear to the Grammys. Um, I, was, I was quite sore at him for a while. I, I guess accidents sometimes produce good results, like peanut butter and chocolate. Or horses and donkeys. I like mules. <laughs> um, but true masterpieces stem from careful planning and perfectly executed arrangements, like Band on the Run. <laughs> We are going to ask about your final concert at Candlestick, well, it's but... it's probably not as interesting as Band on the Run. <laughs> Would you rather tell us about Band on the Run? Sure, uh, if you'd like. Yeah, my greatest achievement grew out of a simple thought. What if a marching band tried to make a single while running at full sprint down a street? I suppose that explains the title then? No, uh, that came about after I played it for the label executives. <laughs> Taste the Sags hated it. Uh, after I sang the line, Band on the Run for the 39th time, they <coughs> chased me out of the studio. We were quite literally a one, two, three, Band on the Run. <laughs> Excellent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Wings released it anyways? Wings knew it was time to fly. And y you can't fly if you can't run. Uh, the Beatles may have may have walked, but uh, Band on the Run truly soared. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It was up for the title sequence, One Tree Hill. <laughs> but Gavin DeGraw writes a moody teen anthem, and suddenly it doesn't matter that I invented rock music, but I'm not bitter. I don't want to be anything other than what I'm trying to be like. You traitor! <laughs> I'm leaving. In fact, I have to... Run. All right, give it up for the legendary Paul McCartney of Band on the Run. Now back to the news. A school in Florida warned parents that students were putting pure vanilla extract in drinks to get drunk during school hours. You know, back in my day, we just got zacked off all-purpose floor cleaner, like Americans. <laughs> Schools in Canada are experimenting with rough play zones during recess, and I personally think it's a little too early to introduce kids to the world of BDSM. <laughs> a dog in Germany managed to release the trigger on a loaded rifle and shoot his owner in the arm. Wow, I didn't realize Airbud was going that dark. <laughs> a Connecticut man was given a ticket for distracted driving after a police officer mistook his hash brown for a cell phone and I was given an emergency stomach surgery after mistaking a cell phone for my hash brown. <laughs> an $18 whiskey has won the first round at the World Whiskey Awards, and just like an $18 prostitute, you can't tell the difference if it's dark. <laughs> a dog saved from an icy Estonian river turned out to be a wolf, and the girl I saved from going to prom alone turned out to be a bitch. <laughs> A man spinning a gun on his finger accidentally shot himself at his daughter's birthday party, giving his little girl the greatest gift of all, trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Butt implants were linked to an increased risk of cancer in a recent study, and breast implants were linked to rich husbands. <laughs> <laughs> Two people in Alabama were arrested after getting into a fist fight over crab legs at a buffet, but in their defense, that crab did have some pretty sexy legs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, now if you're like me, you enjoy reading parenting books to deal with your moody teenager. Oh, do you have children? <laughs> <laughs> to talk about our new book, Raising Children Under the Trump Era and Keeping It Fun, please welcome Cindy Andrews. Good evening. Yeah. Oh, you got some coke on your nose. Oh. No, just baking powder, silly me. I've been running Tommy back and forth to swimming, but my husband made me get a freaking Prius, so our gas mileage is worse than his sex drive. Then little Mallory had dance at 6, threw some cookies in the oven, tutor at 6.30, but she can't read or point her toes, so I don't know why we're ma wasting money on either. Went back in the mobile Prius, took the cookies out of the oven. They're burnt, but I'm not, and I'm so excited for this PTA meeting, guys. Oh, Cindy, this is not a PTA meeting. Yeah, you came on to talk about your book and how much you love your children, you know, despite impending death and demolition. Oh, yes. Okay, I was going to talk about how adorable Tommy looks in a suit, even though you can't really get him to shower lately. He has a fear of water after seeing Titanic, but there's no boats in that water, Thomas. <laughs> Would you say you find raising your children difficult, Cindy? Uh, not at all. They're angels. It feels just like heaven. Like, I've died and now my body runs on nothing like an electric Prius. <laughs> That's why I don't have any kids. But I am thinking of adopting a rock. You don't have any children? Oh, that is such a pity. They're so wonderful. Mallory does this cute thing where she takes her diaper and rubs it all over the wall, just all over. <laughs> She's really artistic, you know? Uh, would you like her? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> uh, I think Sydney just means for a visit, like a play date. Yeah, but like, Maybe a really long play date? Like, maybe until high school graduation? At least their 18th birthdays. I don't think Tommy's gonna make it to college, but there are other routes. He could take the civil service exam. He'll get a pension. That's a long time. We can't just take your children. You're right. Take the house, too. It's right on the water. A dream. The upstairs foyer is my favorite place to contemplate life and where it all went wrong. Cindy, your children may be difficult, but you can't just give them away. A child is not like a broken car. Oh my god, do you want the Prius? Take it, please. Take the Prius too. Take it all. Cindy, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I'll take the Prius. <laughs> <laughs> what? You can live in a car. You can't drive a house. Okay, so I'll just <laughs> buckle Mallory in her car seat and honestly just put Tommy in the front. He's got a head like steel. <laughs> Wait, no, you can't do this. He's right. I need a picture. Oh, I promise they are adorable. Of the car. Oh, he's beautiful. I keep a photo of him right here in my wallet. Honestly, devastating to lose him. Just Gross. Terrible. It's green. I don't want this. No, please. Please, you have to. I only like green when it's being inhaled or when it's being shoved in my bra with a racist president's face on it. <laughs> no, you're, you're backing out. Please, you can't do this. I need you to take it. I need to get out of here. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for coming out, Cindy. I can't believe you almost became a Prius person. I know. Tough times. You know, I could get used to this. You're just so easy to co-host with. You're a beautiful soul, Michelle. Oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> I'm not usually here for the mushy stuff, but... Look into my eyes. I'm confused. Look into my eyes. Okay. I can't look away. Then don't. It kind of burns. It does. I kind of like it. Yes. Corsex cacas no seek. Corsex cacas no seek. Corsex cacas no seek. Well, folks, if you've recently noticed a newfound lack of meaning in your life and growing existential angst, there might be a reason. That's right, people. God is dead. And we killed him. Well, we, <laughs> meaning all of us, yeah, not yeah. just me and Michelle. No. However, we do have the man who actually physically killed God here today with us in the studio. Please welcome all the way from Bedford, Pennsylvania, Mr. Ned Fricci. Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's me. It's me. So, Ned, just how do we comfort ourselves? The murderers of all murderers? I, I don't care about how you comfort yourselves. I have too much to deal with right now. This has been the worst few months of my life. Because of the whole killing God thing, right? How exactly did it go down? Okay, this isn't fully my fault. L like, last Christmas Eve, I was running to 7-Eleven to get more rosé for me and my boys. <laughs> and I guess I'd already had a few, but he still should have known to stand somewhere else. I mean, you're omniscient. You know I'm kind of trash. Maybe you shouldn't walk right behind my car when I'm backing out. 
You killed God in a 7-Eleven parking lot? On his birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I already feel bad enough about it. Don't, don't rub it in. It was horrible. I was watching him bleed out, and I just kind of knew, like, oh, no, this is the omnipotent being who created the universe, isn't it? And then he was like, <laughs> good luck, kid. And I was like, uh, good luck for what? And then he was like, you ever seen the movie Santa Claus? And I was like, the one with Vince Vaughn? And he was like, no, the one with Tim Allen, where he accidentally kills Santa and has to become Santa. And I was like, I think I saw that. And he was like, yeah, it's the same sort of deal, so have fun being God, bye. <laughs> and then he died. And now I'm God. Oh, like in Bruce Almighty? Yeah, except Bruce Almighty has a happy ending. Listen, I've been arrested at multiple Maxbox 20 concerts. <laughs> uh, I'm the last person who should be overseeing the universe. Being God sounds like a lot of responsibility. It is. Everything I do has consequences. The other day, I sneezed while using the urinal, and a typhoon wiped out half of Malaysia. <laughs> and I'm om omniscient, so I know literally everything. That must be helpful. You know, I finally know where I left my other shoe and my birth mother. <laughs> Remember, I know everything. I know word for word every Ronald McDonald erotic fan fiction ever written, <laughs> and there are a lot of them. Do you have any idea what that kind of burden is like? The only upside is whenever the lady at Burger King is mean to me, I get to tell her the exact date she's going to die. Uh, January 22nd, 2020, 2072, October 9th, 2021. And people pray to me. And their prayers are so weird. Like this one dude in Wisconsin keeps asking for a thick goth girlfriend. <laughs> How do I respond to that? You give the people what they want. But there's got to be something good about the whole thing. Like, at very least, you know the meaning of life. If the last guy had a meaning plan for all of this, I must have lost the paperwork. But honestly, I don't think we ever really got to that part of the planning process. I get the sense that this place was pretty mismanaged even before I took over. Wow. Oh, and also, nothing happens when you die. Uh, everything you ever were just fades into nothingness as, be as you become one with the void. Kind of like church. Huh. Bummer. <laughs> I should probably go. You know, the Middle East is a mess, and that's my problem now, apparently, so... Oh, yeah, sure. Thanks for coming? Anytime. Also, if you notice any earthquakes, that's totally normal. I just gotta move some furniture around in my new office. <laughs> so we should get. Yeah, just, uh, sorry. Hmm. So we should get back to the show. Or, or it something? doesn't matter, I guess. <laughs> well, folks, I've adopted a caterpillar named George, and he used all my shampoo last night. More on this after the break. Mm, I remember when my mom used to buy all these box tops yeah. you know, for education. Yeah, I was in the box top black market, actually, for a while. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, and, <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> uh, now for all you diehard fans out there, Otto, the homeless guy who lives outside the studio, died today. He succumbed to my car about 8 o'clock this morning. <laughs> a Michigan gay rights activist set fire to his own home in a fabricated hate crime as a desperate attempt to join the cast of Empire. <laughs> oh. Rami Malik was treated for paramedics after falling at the Oscars. I guess he just got cracked under pressure. <laughs> bum, 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 bada, bum, bum. Bum, bum. An emotional support pit bull mauled a five-year-old child at the Portland airport. For this reason, experts recommended getting a gentler, less aggressive emotional support, Flo Rida. <laughs> A group of scientists successfully gave lab mice infrared vision. So keep your eyes peeled for that predator flushed away crossover. <laughs> a Missouri teen became the first girl to sign onto a college football scholarship in a huge step for CT equality. Uh -oh. <laughs> Bear Grylls faces a possible fine after killing and boiling a frog while filming in a Bulgarian national park. He violated the park's restriction against being weird and gross. 
An inmate served a one-year-old baby. An inmate saved. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> an inmate saved a one-year-old baby from a locked SUV car using his theft skills. He then used his people theft skills to kidnap her. <laughs> <laughs> A man shot down a drone that was searching for a missing dog, said the man. They're never finding Fluffy now. <laughs> <laughs> a fitness influencer is under fire for allegedly scamming clients. Wait, but this mason jar of muscle milk is still going to give me an ass like J-Lo, right? <laughs> Target has announced a new partnership with Vineyard Vines as the bourgeoisie continues to defile even our most sacred of institutions. <laughs> Shakira will appear in court over alleged tax evasion in Spain. Oh, her hips lied. <laughs> <laughs> Our next guest is here to discuss AirPods, the new Apple product sweeping the nation. They have us asking things like, how do those stay in? Is there music playing? Are you talking to Jesus? And mom, when will you love me? <laughs> Let's welcome on our mechanical engineering correspondent from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Steve Mullins. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, my dude? How we doing? What's up, my lady? I fare thee well. How we doing? Okay. Good to see you. Yes. Uh, what's um, going on? Uh. I'm sorry. You're the tech expert. I was told someone from uh, MIT was coming by. No, no, that's uh, that's me, my dudes. I love sound. Uh, I brought my diploma too, you know, just in case. Cool. Let me Show that to you. There you go. This is just a ticket. Mm -hmm. You drove onto a tarmac in your Subaru and tried to instigate a 747 pileup? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? We're here, and we're on a schedule. So uh, why don't you just tell us about AirPods? The technology is actually super sick. Uh, they're wireless headphones built with a custom Apple W1 chip. They use optical sensors and a motion accelerometer to detect when they're in your ears. And they come with a custom charger. Wow. That's actually pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. And uh, you can say goodbye to those wires. <laughs> snip, snip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, what? Oh, well, yeah, well, that's the best part. You know, they're, they're super easy to make. Yeah, you just, uh, let me show you here. You take, uh, take some, some old headphones, right? You got these right here, and uh -huh. then... Got your uh, your scissors, yeah, you know, and you just a little snip, snip, and uh, voila! Oh God! You got yourself some uh, some nice new AirPods, yeah. <laughs> wow, I have now literally transcended into a new technological hemisphere. <laughs> Wait, were those my headphones? How am I going <laughs> to listen to my new Lay Miss soundtrack? Uh, okay, there's no way that you actually think that those things in your ears are AirPods. I mean, I've seen a lot of contraband in my day, and I know when something's not right. I mean, <laughs> all right, all right. They're not a brand new, uh, but they're certifiably refurbished and uh, in pretty good shape. Yeah. You're really yanking our chain right now. Uh, <laughs> can you even listen to anything in those? Oh, yeah, man. I've been bumping a, an Aaron Carter Bon Jovi mix for the past six weeks. <laughs> oh, these bad boys are great. <laughs> Okay, I don't know whose potato you peeled to get on this show, but you're wasting your time. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Hear me out, my dudes. Uh, what if I told you that I had access to Apple's next big thing, and it's right here in my pocket? Next big thing, mm -hmm. you say. Okay. This is the Apple Pencil. With three million sensors and a titanium foundation, it is the most advanced writing utensil ever to be made. Turn A. C minus essay into an A, right? Like Judy Bloom, or kill a fly with the precision of Jack Bauer. All for the reasonable price of $7,999, no decimal place. But I must warn you, its, uh, it's frequency is so potent that it's likely to decrease me and Cliff's fertility levels exponentially, uh, assuming they were normal in the first place. You know what, man? My swimmers are none of your business, and that piece of wood isn't doing anything for them, okay? You need to leave. Oh, oh, hey, uh, that's my Apple Watch. Uh, time for Pilates. Got a dip. <laughs> Give me a few minutes. I uh, need my Gregorian chance to settle me. <laughs> and now, uh, take a look at the new app I'm developing to change lives. Oh, wow, I didn't know you were a philanthropist. Take a look. <laughs> Dating can be rough, 
especially in this modern era. Don't worry, Jennifer, you're not hearing voices again. I'm here to tell you about an exciting new dating service. Finding the right person is hard enough, even without people judging your unorthodox belief system. And that's why we created a cult. From the creators of JDate, ChristianMingle.com, and MormonBang.net comes a cult, the only dating app for cult members. Let's take a look at the numbers. Cult membership has skyrocketed recently, so whether you're into Scientology or snake charming, the Church of Satan or the keto diet, even if you believe the universe was created by a giant sea turtle that hates vaccinations, there's someone out there for you. But don't just take my word for it. I'll admit, I was a little skeptical about the whole online dating thing, but once we went on our first date... Aww, our first virgin sacrifice. And even though our dark lord, may glory, glory and blood, blood reign upon, upon him, has since proclaimed that all, all men go celibate, celibate and, and all women join, join his unholy harem. I still consider her my wife. Her smile is so cute, and I just love how she laughs. And I love that he's the second coming of Christ. That I am. At first, I was kind of offended they would include Catholicism in a cult dating app, but I forgot about that when I met Richard. A cult. Go find Mantis Match for you. Come, my children. Let us bathe. <laughs> Corsus Kakas no Zeke. Corsus Kakas no I suddenly Zeke. love organized religion. Yes, tell me more. I, I feel cleaner than a 30 day chip. More. I feel like a newborn baby, but before being left at the fire station. More. Bless me. No, oh, no, not again. Not again. Oh, sorry, my bad, Amanda. You know I have a type. <laughs> Come, Amanda. You can join us too. You're one of us now. Oh. Well, this has been the breakdown, and I may have joined a cult. See what happens when you leave, Sully? See? Innocent people die! Sully, didn't have to be this way. Go on your boat. <laughs> have fun. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>